Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Monday, happy Monday. We sure get to get on a more happier circumstances. How's everybody doing here today? Hello to the weightlifting geek. Hello to the real as she is a positive therapist, Igwe's daughter. Hello, hello to everybody. Hey, before the billion, salute. Hello to the weightlifting geek again. Uh, all these gentlemen have pretty good channels. You should check them out. Hello, skincare do's and don'ts. All right. So got a deep topic to discuss today. Heart disease in the African-American community. Now, why are we discussing this? Because unfortunately, recently, a very famous black YouTuber, Kevin Samuels, passed away from cardiac arrest, right? So probably the best way to explain is let me tell you a story. I'll begin this way. It's the most important story you've ever heard before. I guarantee this. Why is that? Because it's going to save your life and the life of your loved ones. Guaranteed. Doesn't matter whether you're 15 or 85. Does not matter, right? Now, imagine most of your life you've not had money. Just not had money. Then suddenly, big economic event has come in. And now you have money. Maybe you're a college grad, got your first job, you're making $50,000 a year. You had no money before, <laughs> right? So now you have a lot of money. Or maybe you've been working for a while, you're 30, you got a promotion, or you make 80 grand, maybe 100 grand, maybe 150 grand. Maybe you're 50, 40 or 50. Your business has popped off, it's blown up. You're making half a million a year, a million a year, right? Life changing. So you're making a lot of money now. And again, a lot of different things to different people, but it's life changing. Now that's intoxicating, right? The more you do, the more you make, the more you want. It's very intoxicating. Now, this takes up time and resources to do this, obviously. Now, imagine, because you're successful, you see on the horizon another big opportunity, even bigger. You make even more, be more successful. And you know you can do it. You've, you've mapped this out. It's clear to you. What is that next promotion? Are you expanding your business or what have you? So you need even more resources and more time. Now, you can hire people, buy extra equipment. You can do things like that. But the thing you can't get is extra time. You can't really get extra time. You can't buy time, as the saying goes. You don't got a time machine, right? Can't, you can't get time that way. That's not an option for you. So what do you do? You got to find it elsewhere, right? Maybe you cook less or stop cooking. Maybe you work out less. Maybe you stop working out. Or maybe, maybe you just sleep less. Maybe that's what starts happening, right? Because you're so busy, busy working. You're not, you're not wasting time. You're busy working. Well, Kevin Samuels, he worked a lot, very hard. Traveled a lot, right? Very successful. He was sleeping, it's been publicly reported, three hours per night. Three hours per night. Three hours per night. The human body is not designed to function in three hours per night, right? It's not designed to do that at all. I mean, studies have shown that with short sleep duration of less than five hours or five to six hours, it increases the risk for high blood pressure by 350 to 500% compared to those who slept six hours or longer per night. Let me say that again. 350 to 500%, the risk of high blood pressure is increased if you sleep five hours or less per night. That is crazy. Those are insane numbers, crazy numbers, right? Now, why does this matter? Studies show if you have uncontrolled blood pressure, this is the leading cause of heart disease for everybody, everybody of all races, both sexes. Unfortunately, black people, we have the largest rate of high blood pressure compared to all of the groups, right? And this is a big problem because you don't feel symptoms of high blood pressure when it's elevated, right? That's why it's called the silent killer. The silent killer just sneaks up on you, right? You don't feel anything. Many people who have heart attacks feel no pain. They may feel pressure and other symptoms. Now, this high blood pressure places unnecessary strain on the heart and can cause damage, right? 
Now, we, we know Kevin was drinking Red Bulls during live streams, right? Why is that? To stay up. His live streams will sometimes go past midnight into the wee hours of the morning, 1 a.m., etc. Now, Red Bull has the same amount of caffeine as a cup of coffee. So it's not like it has more, right? But typically, you only want to have one or two cups per day, generally speaking. We don't know how many Red Bulls he was drinking. Clearly, it was several. All right. Now, why was he staying up doing this? Because he's making so much money. How much money? Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Again, it's been publicly reported. You get $3,000 for a one-hour consultation. Or be paid $25,000 to go with somebody as an image consultant on a shopping trip to the mall. He even turned down a $10 million branding deal. $10 million. That's how much money he was making. A lot of money. So, you know, the thing is, right, there's this old saying I remember years ago when I had my sleep problems learning. If you cheat on sleep, her twin sister, death, will avenge her. Guaranteed. I guess if you're a lady, it'll be her twin or his twin brother, death, will avenge him, right? <clears throat> now, some of you might say, oh, but he's slim, right? Well, this is true. How could this happen? The thing is, being slim is just not enough. It's just not. Don't believe me? You guys ever heard of Ranjan Das, CEO of SAP India? I remember hearing this story some years ago. Dude ran marathons, super fit, slim, optimal weight, 42 years old, died of a massive heart attack. Why? The man was sleeping four to five hours a night. That's all the man was sleeping in a high-stress job like CEO of a company. Kevin was in definitely a high-stress situation, making a ton of money, right? If it was easy, we'd all be making a ton of money. So Ranjan did almost everything right. Work out, eat right, the right weight. But they mess up on the fourth thing, the sleep. Sleep, right? Sleeping less than five hours per night, or even just up to five hours per night, it leads to a 39% increase in heart disease. 39%. That's, that's another crazy number. Think about that. If you sleep five hours or less per night, right? Seriously, think about this. You literally have a 40% increased risk of having a heart attack. That is crazy. Or specifically heart disease, which in any event leads to the same thing anyway, right? If you sleep six hours or less per night, it's an 8% increase in risk. How many people can honestly say they consistently sleep more than six hours a night? I know many of you out there are sleeping five, six hours a night, right? And you can't catch up on sleep on the weekend. That's been scientifically debunked many years ago, right? It doesn't matter. It's not like mathematics where, well, if I sleep five hours a night and I sleep the extra ones on the Saturday and Sunday, I make up for it. The human body doesn't work that way. Once you miss sleep, it's gone. It's poof. You can't go back. Again, you can't jump in the way back machine, right? There's no time machine here. Some of you might think to yourself, well, I'm young, you know, and I'm not really fat. You may go, I'm big boned, right? <laughs> I'm thick. But you don't go to the doctor regularly, so you don't really have a clue what your blood pressure is. Studies show for young people aged 25 to 49, you're twice as likely to get high blood pressure if they slept less. So unless you know your numbers, you're just really guessing that you're healthy. You may look healthy on the outside, but you may never healthy inside. You see this with bodybuilders when they pass away in their 30s and 40s. This amazing physique, but they drop dead of cardiac arrest, right? And unfortunately, we black men, we avoid doing regular doctor visits like it's the plague, right? We go far less than black women and far less than the rest of a society, period. We just don't go to the doctor, which is obviously a terrible problem, terrible problem. You know, I made this video to, I wanted this live stream, right, I should say, to highlight the problems in our community around heart disease. And more importantly, offer solutions. Don't just list a bunch of problems, right? So firstly, number one, you need to visit your doctor. Get your numbers checked, find out what's going on. This is what you need to know. No guessing. Second, you need to change your lifestyle. Get more active and eat better. Don't know how to do that? Then hire somebody like me. Get yourself a certified personal trainer and nutritionist, right? Speaking of hiring somebody like me, hire me. I'm legitimate, right? I'm a certified personal trainer and nutritionist. You know, and as I've told you guys before, I was very fat. But look at me now. I'm 48 years old. Great health. I just did my physical last week with my doctor. 
Blood pressure, 124 over 78. All my blood markers looked great. I feel great, right? So it's just not on the exterior. Because you really need to be honest with yourself. And only you can be truly honest with yourself, right? Um, if you don't know what the hell you're doing, you need to get a professional. If you have to go to court, you wouldn't go there by yourself, you get a lawyer. When you need a haircut, you go to a barber. If you need to do your hair, you go to a hairdresser. Typically, don't do these things yourself. And please, please, please don't get some generic trainer. No matter how good they look. If the dude's got jacked muscles, six-pack abs, or the lady looks flawless. That doesn't mean anything. A lot of these people, they're not that good. They'll have you doing these exotic exercises that aren't super effective, right? Jumping up and on in boxes, battle ropes, this, that, burpees, whatever. Make you sweat, make you feel like you're doing something. But when you look in the gym where all the super fit hot bodies are, they're typically not doing these routines, right? Most of these trainers, they couldn't even coach themselves. They're usually former athletes, or they have great genetics, or they're taking performance enhancing drugs, or some combination of the three of these things, right? Why do you think when professional athletes retire, they get fat? Why do you guys think this is? It's kind of a trick question, right? But I'll just give you the answer. It's because they don't know what they're doing. Ever since they were this high, they were in some structured environment, right? Fully structured environment. They were told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, eat this, eat that. Then suddenly they retired and they just set loose. But they don't really know what to do. They don't know to adjust their macros, their calories, change their workout depending on their age, this, that. And then they blow up. And these are the people with elite genetics. You don't become a professional athlete unless you have genetics that are superior to mine and yours, right? So if these people actually knew what they were doing, they would still look great and still be very healthy. But they don't. They don't know what they're doing. So again, don't like your lack of knowledge and your pride, which is the first deadly sin, keep you, <laughs> right, unhealthy. Don't, don't, please don't do that. I mean, why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you this because this is what you need to hear, not what you want to hear for some of you. Right? At the end of the day, you're not a moron, so don't act like a moron. I'm just being as blunt as possible here. So number three, right? get seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Or don't rely on caffeine to get you through the day. Caffeine does not make up for lost sleep. It does not give you energy. It gives the illusion of energy. It makes you feel more alert, more energetic, but it doesn't actually give you energy. All right? Why is that? There's this molecule in the body called adenosine. It tells your brain when it's time to go to bed. It blocks the message from caffeine, right? Or caffeine rather blocks the message from adenosine telling you to go to bed. It blocks and blocks it. But the adenosine is still there. It's just building up, building up. It's like a debt, you know? Maybe you borrow money from the loan shark and this debt is building up, right? You don't have to pay it. So when the caffeine wears off, the adenosine is still there. And it's just going to rush in wallop you, and then you can take your ass to bed, right? But at that point in time, you're going to suffer some consequences. You can't get something for nothing. There'll be a price to pay for delaying, <laughs> for not paying that debt, right? You have disruptive sleep, REM cycles going to be messed up. We'll get more into REM cycles a little later, right? <clears throat> I mean, you could argue that the consumption of caffeine is the largest unregulated drug study in the history of humankind. History of humankind. There's a fantastic book called Why We Sleep. You guys should look into it. Great, great book written by a doctor. And don't be afraid to take a nap. Naps aren't just for old people or kids, right? If you feel exhausted, that's your body trying to tell you something. It's like you're driving a car. It's making noises. or Something is off. You ignore it. The problem gets worse. People tend to not just collapse. There's usually signs, warning signals, etc. So pay heed to that. And of course, again, get your numbers checked because high blood pressure, silent killer. I mean, studies show that just one night's sleep loss increases very toxic substances in your body, such as interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, and C-reactive protein. All of these things increase the risk of cancer, arthritis, and heart disease. When you don't sleep, all sorts of bad things happen. So what's ideal sleep? So sleep is comprised of two stages, right? We have REM. You've probably heard of this before, rapid eye movement, and non-REM. 
Now, REM helps with the mental consolidation, while non-REM, physical repair, muscle building, etc. You know, that's how you build those muscles, right? Now, when you don't get enough REM sleep, this is why when you wake up with the alarm after five to six hours sleep, you're mentally not there through the day. Maybe you're irritable or you're just not as sharp. Because optimally, you really shouldn't be waking up with the alarm. Similarly, if you need coffee by, say, 10 a.m., noon or whatever, just to get through the day, that means you definitely didn't sleep enough because you shouldn't need the coffee. You may want to have coffee, but if you actually need it to function, it's not because it's just because you're addicted to caffeine. It's because your ass isn't getting enough rest. Now, when you don't get, say, get less than five hours of sleep, you don't get the complete uh, non-REM sleep. So now your body's a physical mess. And this is when you're physically tired through the day and your immunity also goes down. So you got the mental slowing down and you have the physical slowing down. So again, and I can't emphasize this enough, get your numbers checked. If you don't know what the hell you're doing, get a professional. Don't let your ignorance and your arrogance hold you back. Do not do this, right? So, I mean, there's an old saying, I heard this years ago, don't let a good crisis go to waste. This is not a crisis, but in this case, hopefully a famous person passing away through the cardiac arrest who was slim, which goes with a lot of people going, well, how could this happen, right? Can bring more awareness to this problem because it, it's it's a terrible problem in our community. The statistics are they're even worse than I thought, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I knew they were bad, but I didn't realize they were how bad they really were. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, we are 30% more likely to die from heart disease than all other groups. You know, although we're 40% more likely to have high blood pressure, we're less likely to have that blood pressure under control. And again, that's just people not going to the doctor, right? Or they go to the doctor and they don't take their medications or they don't make the lifestyle changes. We're 50% more likely to have a stroke. Again, terrible numbers, terrible numbers, right? Terrible, terrible numbers. Um, yeah, black men, 70% more likely to die from stroke compared to non-black men. And it's a myth that heart attacks are just for men, right? The numbers are pretty much the same for men and women. It's, I think that myth started in the 50s, I saw a doctor explain. You know, African-American women are nearly 60% more likely to have high blood pressure as compared to non-Black women. Again, these numbers are not like 5 10% different. They're these huge-ass numbers. 40% bad, more worse. 50% worse. 60% worse. They're massive, humongous numbers. Humongous numbers, right? It's this is where this ignorance is not helping us, right? A simple example. Only one in five black women believe she's personally at risk. Only 58% were aware of the signs and symptoms of a heart attack. You know, just because you don't, you can't stick your head in the sand like an ostrich, right? Pretending something is not there doesn't mean it will not be there, right? You gotta, the more you know, what is it? The more you know, the better you can do something like that. <laughs> I'm messing up that saying, but you guys get the point. You get the picture. You get the picture. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. I dropped the link and I will drop it again. And see, I already got two people backstage. Perhaps I dropped it too early this time. And I see you have several super chats. All right. Thank you, Tamika, for the super chat. <laughs> As I always say, I appreciate every dollar you guys give me. I know it's your hard-earned money or somebody else's hard-earned money. So Tamika says, do you think the sacrifice this man put in to build his empire was worth it? We don't want to lose you, coach. All money ain't good, so pace yourself. <laughs> I agree. You know, it is, like I said earlier, it's intoxicating, right? When you're successful and you get doing more and more and more, and you, you can clearly see it because Kevin clearly was a brilliant person. You don't accidentally make millions of dollars, right? <laughs> And if you turn down millions, it's because you have foreseen that you can do even better. That is pretty clear to me. Uh, yeah, Ranjan Das, that CEO, passed away. So Kevin is not the only very smart, very successful person that uh, can sacrifice their health, let's say, in the pursuit of doing better. So no, obviously, it definitely was not worth it. Definitely was not worth it. Nothing is worth your life at the end of the day. Nothing is worth your life. All right, so back in backstage, I have the weightlifting geek. You are first in line. I'm bringing you up first. 
Hey, good evening. How are you? Welcome to the show. What's going on? Glad to be yeah. here. Yeah, not much, not much. So my man here has a pretty good YouTube channel. Like myself, he made a transformation. <laughs> he had a big <laughs> physical transformation. Yeah, you know, similarly switching, getting your health better, et cetera, et cetera. So, so what do you think about all of this? I mean, what happened with him having a heart attack? You know, what goes on in our community with this problem? Um, I feel like it's really important to take notice of the things that happen to others. Um, okay. My parents raised me to believe that um, experience is the best teacher, but it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be your own. So okay. when you look at the experiences of others, such mm -hmm. as what we're talking about right now, it is a good reminder for us to examine what we're doing so that we can make sure we're learning from the experiences of others. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. That's a great point. So what do you think he could have done or should have done to perhaps, you know, decrease the risk of this happening? Well, um, I think he probably could have taken advantage of some of the things that were available to him to allow mm -hmm. him to get more rest and to get more sleep. Mm -hmm. um, someone like me that's just starting on this YouTube journey, I'm putting a lot into it every day because mm -hmm. I have to build momentum. I right. have to get going. But my plan is once I reach the point where I need to be, Mm -hmm. Then I can slow down and then I can take advantage of some other things to take a little bit off of me. Because okay. if if you're gripping, grabbing for everything, right. if, eventually you're going to run out of hands and you're going to run out of things to grab. Right, right, right. That's a good point. That's a good point. So how, so what are some of the things you you yourself planted on? What are some of the things I guess you think he could have done to lower the workload, so to speak? When you have more people in your corner, Mm -hmm. that can help you, that can take away some of the stress that you deal with. Mm -hmm. And then part of it, too, is recognizing that some things you have to say no to. And that is one of the biggest problems that we as humans have, is recognizing right. our limitations and mm -hmm. saying no, even right. though there's there's benefits down the road. Right. We might not make it there. No, that's a great point. So how do you plan to not fall into that trap? So um, my biggest thing is mm -hmm. actually having people to do things for me down okay. the road. And um, I've even implemented some things right now. When I first mm -hmm. started in March of last year, mm -hmm. I spent every waking minute of the weekends editing and getting yeah. videos ready for the next week. Right. And in the last four to five months, I've transitioned. I do a lot of live streams. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of vlogs that are unedited. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have to spend time editing. I literally okay. put it up raw. So now I have more time. So right. little things like that, it just takes some of the pressure off of you. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Have you ever thought of outsourcing any things like editing, for example, like the Fiverr? Yes. Yes, okay. I have. And I only make one edited video a week. It's okay. my Tech Tuesday video. That's okay. the only one that's edited. Everything else is 100% raw. Got it. Got it. So do you edit that or do you outsource that to like a five or an Upwork? Right now I'm editing it. But okay. when I have the ability and the income to come in, I definitely mm -hmm. want to get somebody else to do the editing. Gotcha. So here's a question for you. How much do you think it would like, for example, that Tech Tuesday video, when you mm -hmm. edit it, how, how long is the raw footage, for example? Well, um, that's the other thing that I've mm -hmm. kind of learned as I've gone. Um, mm -hmm. There was a time where a video would be two to three hours. Okay. And I'm finding content out of it. Mm -hmm. But now um, it's one take for my Tech Tuesday. So okay. my Tech Tuesday total footage mm -hmm. is only 10 to 11 minutes. Got it. So got it. Got all it. I have to do is add some sound to it, mm -hmm. um, make sure that I highlight my mistakes because everybody enjoys those. Right. And I can <laughs> let it fly. <laughs> okay. 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 Gotcha. Gotcha. So, how long in total would you say it takes you to edit that video? Um, about maybe 30 minutes. Okay. Yes. It's very minimal impact to your day. Okay. I see what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. Now, gotcha. um, last year, this time mm -hmm. I was spending at least a good six to eight hours a week editing videos. Okay. But, um, okay. this year I want to ride my motorcycle. I want right. to do some things that make me happy. Right. I want to have some time <laughs> to get some rest. Yes. To be able to make some content. Right. So, right. Um, There's the, a balance. The, yeah. um, 
the raw footage mm -hmm. has been has been perfect for me because okay. it is so much easier now. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, is that old saying? Was it uh, all work and no play make Jack's uh, Jack a yeah. dull boy, and then all play and no work make Jack's a broke boy <laughs> or poor boy? Right? <laughs> and in some cases, a dead boy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. That is true. That is true. That is true. That is true. Okay, okay, man. But yeah, thank you for the words of wisdom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Likewise, there, bro. Any other things you want to touch on? Um, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be here. Yeah. To have a chance to to interact one on one with someone such as yourself. Oh yeah, um, thanks. Me too. My... <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. I'm just I'm trying to grow my channel. Uh, we just yeah. hit 800 subscribers this past yeah, weekend. So I'm super excited. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> nice. And, mm -hmm. it, the whole thing is motivation, and that's what I like yeah. about your channel. Um, okay, thanks. So many fitness channels are just about fitness. Yeah. But what I'm finding is there's so many untouched avenues of fitness that don't mm -hmm. get attention, like this video that you're doing right now. It, it's okay. awareness that's related to fitness and life. Yes, that's true. And there's no point in looking good if you're unhealthy on the inside, right? Just it's, it's exactly. No you know, you know, kind of aches and pains, and yeah, it's just just not worth it. So again, you have a very good channel. I've checked out some of your vlog you. your your daily eating the vlogs because yeah you know you, it's funny you can take it for granted but uh somebody's trying to transform the way you transform that they they may just not know something that you think is extremely basic so it's very that's useful true. to actually see that oh wow that's what he does or that's how that's what it looks like you know uh so yeah that's again true. yeah continue to do what you're doing i'm sure you'll keep growing <laughs> yes sir likewise likewise right. thank you for calling in no problem bro be safe Thanks. Same to you. Same to you. Have a good one. Thanks. All right. That was a weightlifting geek. Really good channel. You know, it's an interesting mix of a guy who's transformed. Very, very strong dude. Stronger than me. <laughs> and uh, as he said, weightlifting geek, obviously very smart. He's in tech and super duper strong, super duper strong. He does lift some very heavy weights and he puts up his fails as well. A lot of people just put up, oh, you know, they do some fantastic things. Everything is perfect and flawless, but he actually puts up when he does not succeed, which I think is pretty valuable and pretty useful. All right, so let me see. We got D.I. Grifter then before the billions. All right, so let me bring you up D.I. Grifter. Good evening, welcome to the show. Hi, good What's night. Going? It's going good. Okay, okay. So what did, what did you think? Yeah, man. If, as you keep saying, if you cheat and sleep, Yes. The twin sister that's coming for you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that is true. That's true. You know, it's very in today's world, whether you're doing just very successful or you got Netflix or hell YouTube, it's very easy to just I find time to spies. You blink, oh, it's 11 p.m. Oh, you blink, it's midnight, right? Mm -hmm. so like for you personally, um, do you have problems going to bed on time or sleeping? I it's 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 kind of funny. I have no problems going to sleep. If okay. I lie down with my eyes closed for too long, <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. But I hate going to sleep. Okay. I always feel like no, there's something else I could be doing. I could I could read this, I could watch that. Mm -hmm. But over the years I have learned that I need to get my rest. Because okay. you just feel better the next day. Yeah, yes, yeah. It's formal. Fear of missing out, you know. Yeah. A friend of mine taught me that some years ago. Because it's ironic, right? If you say you went to bed at 10 mm -hmm. versus 11. Say you did one more hour of reading, watching something on Netflix, whatever. If you go to bed at 10, the next day, that, that hour that you, you know, saved, you could use it the next day. <laughs> so it's exactly. not like you, exactly. you feel like you're losing. You feel like you're losing. It's more like delayed gratification, so to speak. Yep. You know? Is delayed gratification. So what? how were you able to come to that realization? Like, was it an event, a book, a person? What got you to this epiphany, let's say? I can't, I can't put my finger on exactly what it was. Okay. And I guess I'll just put it down to life experience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Wow. Yeah, well, I'm glad you discovered this because... Yeah, it's very, very difficult. That formal thing, it's a thing, because I struggle with that myself. 
the number one thing I struggle with for health, fitness, whatever, because everybody's got something, nobody's perfect, is the sleep. Whether it's the sleep apnea I had or just taking my ass to bed because like you, I'm out as soon as I get in that bed. So one of the tricks I do is I like listen to like a podcast or audiobook in the bed and I'll just fall asleep. It'll be set on a timer. So I don't feel like I'm missing out. I'm doing something fun. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And then I just psh, conk out. But yeah, it's very... Yeah, it's very tempting to just stay up and do stuff. And then with the artificial light stimulating your brain, it's not making your body produce melatonin so you don't feel sleepy or you get that second wind at midnight. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's just you being tricked, you know what I mean? You're just being tricked. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pause one second. I see some super chats in here. And I'm usually terrible at these things. So I see a skincare do's and don'ts brought up a super chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Skincare do's and don'ts says it's so unfortunate that he succumbed to a heart attack. He's black, edu black educated man with access to research and knowledge about health issues. Health risk. It is my hope that we all learn from his untimely passing. This is so true. This is so, so true because he's obviously a very, very smart man, right? Obviously, but again, you know, you can be very smart and still. I mean, I, I'm a, like think I'm a smart guy, and I was clinically obese, right? I, I can't logically explain how I got there, but I clearly got there. I was pre-diabetic, ridiculously high blood pressure, like 180 over 140, some mm -hmm. ridiculous numbers like this. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so, you know, yeah. Yeah, I don't think, it's not an intelligence thing. It, no. It's, yeah, it, it's something that logic doesn't have anything to do with. So true, so true, so true. This oh. is so, so true. This is so true. Nothing to do with that. Um, so what other, like, what is it literally that allows you, this may sound like a simple squid, to actually just take your ass to bed at night? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you uh, might, but what do you do? Although I struggle sometimes still. Well, I, I won't say that sometimes that I, I don't pull an all-nighter still, but okay. it's no longer the regular. It's a more of a rare occurrence. Okay. Um, but <laughs> sorry, getting distracted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have somebody who helps you to go to bed on okay. time, that, that greatly helps. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> they might threaten you with violence to do so, but it helps. <laughs> Sounds like you have somebody else there with you, perhaps. That is the, the, your help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> personal helper. Okay, they. Okay, I got you. I got you. Sounds like probably a yeah a girlfriend or something. Okay, that's yeah. good. <laughs> yes, we all need assistance to help us, right? Professional True. help. <laughs> True. True. Professional help. Professional help. All right. And I see you had given me a super chat. Thank you so much. Yeah, got to support your good works. Yeah, thanks. People chase wealth at the expense of health, then chase health at the expense of health. Yes, that's so true. You know, yeah, there was that saying I went around years ago about the Dalai Lama saying something like this, like, what fascinates him about man, spends all his effort making all his money, then years later spends all his money trying to recuperate the health. But mm -hmm. at that time, it's very difficult to do this. You know, I mean, the human mm -hmm. body is amazing for recovery, but man, very difficult. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have your priorities right. Yeah. So, what do you think uh, could help other people? Like I said, the black community we have terrible statistics on <laughs> heart disease. Do you think it's a lack of knowledge or or what? Why do you think this is? Well, I can't really speak to the African American experience. I can mm -hmm. only guess mm -hmm. that maybe people aren't going to the doctor, getting regular checkups mm -hmm. to get on top of any issues. Okay. So I don't know if that's it. Gotcha. Because you are in Jamaica, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Is it the same problem there? You know, I didn't even think to look at the statistics. I just assumed they were similarly bad, <laughs> to be honest. I, I, I don't know for certain, but I'm going to guess and say no, but that's just a guess. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. saying that because I remember, like, typically guys don't go to the doctor. That's why I was thinking it's probably something kind of similar, to be honest. Yeah, it could be right. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I just don't know a lot of people. I haven't heard of a lot of people having heart attacks. 
Okay, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So that's interesting. Well, I mean, here you do have the other factors. You know, it's it's a culture that for good and for bad, it's, it's the place where you can be most successful, let's say, generally speaking, mm -hmm. in the world. But there's a price for this. You work very hard, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's more, it's extremely fast paced. Probably the fastest paced place in the world, like you could argue. Clearly the most upside, uh, mm -hmm. obviously super fast paced, which could then lead to you, yeah, working a lot many more hours, et cetera, et cetera. That is true. I mean, work-wise, mm -hmm. things are more laid back in Jamaica compared to the U.S. So the more I think about it, you're probably right. <laughs> you're probably yeah. less than that, probably, <laughs> actually. You're probably less than that. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Thanks for yeah, sharing. No problem. <laughs> Have a good night. Yeah, man. You too. Thank you. Thanks. All right. I'm just going to grab a couple more super chats here. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Super. Then it'll bring up before the billions. Seems like he did a lot of his stuff alone, like he didn't want to share the reins to his baby. That can stress you the hell out for sure. Ah. <laughs> That's a very interesting point because you know the first time I became a manager, one of the difficult things to do for anybody who's ever supervised people is to let go. <laughs> you know, I can do it better, so I'll do it myself. But you can't do everything yourself because you know, I know he would go from one thing to the next. Like a, what did they say in a video? Like finish a live stream, sleep for three hours, get up, do a consultation, then plan for the next live stream. And clearly, at that level, super duper smart person. But maybe, I don't know if he had a team of people, so to speak, or not. Maybe, like you said, he didn't let go more. Or maybe he just couldn't find people who could do what he could do. That's because he's so creative. I guess there's that point as well. If you're the creative mastermind, perhaps it's hard to delegate that. I mean, personally, I delegate editing of videos. I discovered that very fast. I use Fiverr because that stuff takes a long time. And especially with my poor skills, it would take even longer. <laughs> so it'd be low quality and it would take me forever to do. It. So I figured that out pretty early. Very good point. Thank you. Oh, shout out to the lead attorney. Thank you so much. Oh, this is my biggest super chat ever. Thank you. <laughs> salute back to you. This lead attorney says, salute, Kirk. Your content is so important. Thank you. And hey, stealing your idea. You're the sponsor for today's show. <laughs> You're the sponsor for today's shows. Thanks. I don't think I missed any other super chats. Okay, so I'm going to bring up Before the Billions, who's been patiently waiting in the back. Welcome, Before the Billions. Hey. Hey, hey, hey Kirk, how are you doing? Doing fantastic. So BTB has a very cool channel. He's a very smart guy. I like, I like his views on topics. Covers a wide range of things. And I don't want to butcher <laughs> <laughs> what he actually does because he has a... He has a great little intro that he does. So why don't you tell everybody what you do on your channel? All right. Well, what's up, everybody? This is William from Before the Billions. I am a professional data engineer. And on my channel, I teach people on how to get into tech. I go through many different discussions about different topics. And I also do interviews on my channel. So if any of those things have injured you, then please go check out my channel. You know what, Kirk? Thank you again for having me up here, man. Yeah. And uh, this is a great discussion. Uh, obviously, you know, you brought up the fact of, you know, sleeping a lot more, uh -huh. getting more active, eating right, uh, all of those things. In addition to that, uh, the high stress of the position that he was in, yes. he was on his way, you know, trying to become like that high value man over uh -huh. here, putting in all that work, making millions of dollars. And you have a lot of people who did not like him as well to where he had to pretty much hide. I'm away yeah. a lot of parts of his life as well as True. being estranged from a lot of his family members. Um, being that high profile, high value man mm -hmm. uh, leads to you not only missing out on sleep because you have to work so much and you have such a, a high pace uh, position that you're trying mm -hmm. to attain, but also it makes you depressed. Depression can also lead to uh, you, you know, passing yeah. away as well a lot more, a lot more quickly. And it also mimics other diseases as well. That depression can lead to a whole bunch of other things. It's, um, it's of course, this is not this is not health advice or financial right. advice or anything <laughs> like that, right? But I just I just know that um, mm -hmm. if you do not take care of you know your body, you don't go to the doctor. I myself, I need to go to the doctor myself more often. Yes, 
Uh, I, I definitely do, but I uh, definitely go to the dentist. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's funny what you say because you raise a very great point. Cartes are levels, <clears throat> you know, because yeah, you can really stress the hell out of yourself. Like stress, it, it, your brain can play all kind of crazy tricks on you, and if even if you're near doing well, you can be under stress, right? Planning for the next project, you got lots at stake, millions on the line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or as you point out. You have the haters, you have people coming after you. You got to be on top of your game to deal with them, let's say, for lack of a better word. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, the stress will kill you. That's that age old saying. All these little folksy type sayings, they all have some basis in science at the end of the day, right? When they say stress will kill you, <laughs> that is not an accident. You know, that, that is very, very accurate. I think you hit the nail on the head there with the stress. Uh, stress has been shown to make all your biomarkers terrible, right? If you do labs, I remember a nurse telling me this. I got a doctor told me this. Too. If you are relaxing, you do labs, your labs may look one way. You're stressed out, you do the same labs, your labs look a different way. The same, you're the same body, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But things just look worse. And that can take a toll on your body, right? Take a toll on your body. When your cortisol goes up, all type of bad things happen. That's the stress hormone, you know? All type of bad things happen. So for you personally, do you have any sleep issues or do you go to your bed on time? <laughs> ever since starting, uh, ever since becoming an adult, I've been having issues <laughs> with sleep. It's, I, I had this conversation with my girlfriend earlier today. Yeah. Okay. And I was saying how there is quite literally never a boring moment. Yeah. I was like, I can't even remember the last time I was bored because I have so many things to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the fact that you have pointed this out is that um, as a data engineer, you know, person in tech, mm -hmm. uh, they always say that what you can do, if you're having an issue with solving a problem right now, okay, step away from the problem and then come back to it later when your brain is refreshed. That mm -hmm. way your mind is continuously thinking about solving this problem. Mm -hmm. You may not finish it right now, but yeah. later on it's going to come quicker to mm -hmm. you. And um, you'll be able to get it done. Yes. Right. So instead of stressing yourself out, which is one of the leading mm -hmm. causes of, um, of you know, passing or, you know, death, yeah. uh, you do have, um, you know, you have more time. Right. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to come. Yes. There's, all, there's, whole, there's a whole bunch of people that, who thought that tomorrow wasn't going to come. And it's, they yeah. let you know, like, hey, <laughs> you know, they said they set up here and they spent their money on all this and that. They all. Oh, you know, YOLO, to, yeah. you know, tomorrow ain't gonna come, and it's yeah. arcane in their 60s and 70s and everything <laughs> like that. And they, you know, they didn't prepare themselves. Yes. But what you gotta do is just step away, mm -hmm. and like, I like the fact that you say delayed gratification, yeah. because if you have that delayed gratification, like, okay, you know what? I really need to go ahead and solve this. I really need to go ahead and edit this video mm -hmm. but you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to sleep and then i'm gonna do it better the next time yeah <laughs> that is true right. words of wisdom words of wisdom and you know as a data engineer I know you're very logical that's why i was saying a little with the time you know whether you go to bed on time and you quote unquote save the hour it's the same hour either way whether you stay up late using the hour or you use that hour tomorrow when you're fresher it's the same hour right mm -hmm. it's just you're much better tomorrow, whether it's for work or watching that Netflix show that just came with you itching to watch, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. So it sounds like you have that under control, or let me ask, let me not assume. <laughs> I it, wish. Okay, okay, okay. So there are two things to touch on. First, you said you've not been to the doctor in a while. I know for me, I was terrible at that. And but, Well, let me rephrase this. The slightest thing wrong with me, I'd always run to the doctor. But when I came to the U.S., I was used to doing what I do in Jamaica. You just go to the ER because the ER, there's no special cost in Jamaica, right? So I would just or I'd just find a doctor when I realized I couldn't do that here until a doctor told me, you know what? You really should get a regular doctor, a full-time doctor. Like, for example, prostate cancer, number one cancer that's avoidable. And he was like, dude, you know, you, once you had 40 or so, you know, just get it checked. And I said, you know, you're right. So that's why I got myself a regular, regular doctor, let's say. And again, you know, because that's another thing where if you go to the doctor regular, your doctor will say, oh, by the way, William, you know, when was the last time we did checked this or when's the last time we did that? Mm -hmm. And then they check things and you can find problems if problems exist. Right. You know, being proactive versus reactive, so to speak. So it sounds like you need to go do a physical, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Last time I went, I had an allergic re reaction and I needed to go. Oh, was, no. oh, no. That was actually one of those things like when you hmm. actually need to do it. Yeah. You know, I, I I know it's just one of those things I'm slacking. I need to go ahead and set it up tomorrow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> schedule, just schedule it. Then you'll be forced to go. You'll be forced to go. So regarding the sleep now, like I noticed since doing YouTube, like for me, something had to give. Right. Yeah. So for me, I started working out less <laughs> because I didn't want to stay up late doing this and that and blah, 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 blah. Right. So something kind of had to give. So for me, it was working out less. And I guess when things normalize, I can go back to my regular fitness schedule, <laughs> so yeah. to speak. So for you now, what what happened with you? Yeah, actually, you know, what's funny, Kirk, is that uh, I had that same thing happened to me. I had a whole bunch of like events that came up, mm -hmm. um, like networking events. Mm -hmm. um, I had, you know, YouTube going on, had my oh. full time job, big projects with that. Yeah. And then I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm only getting like four out, four or five hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. I need to go ahead and do something. Yeah. And then I, I, had, uh, I hadn't been to the gym in like a week. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I'm about to go to the gym today. I just got back from the gym. Yeah. And then I was sitting here like, oh, my gosh. I could usually get the fifty fives doing a decline on um, yeah. bench press. I'm yeah. thinking, like, oh no, I need to. Yeah. Need to go back. <laughs> I need to I go back down. Feeling. Yeah, I know that feeling, man. I yeah. was like, man, <laughs> but you know what? Is that uh, I just got to stay consistent. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I had to pro get my priorities straight. That's mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is um. Yeah. Because what what happens is that you have somebody, well, you'll have somebody who does do anything. Mm -hmm. Or you know, doesn't do something that they want to yeah. do. Their priority, like let's say, my goal is to get up to like ten thousand subs on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Or my goal is to get my six pack in order for yeah. summertime or something like that. You know what I mean? Yep. And what my goal is is this, and it should be my priority. Mm -hmm. But instead, my priorities are chilling at the house not really doing much of anything yeah. you know it's not it's not that i don't have the time my right. priorities are just something else uh -huh. my, pro, my yeah. priority is uh watching netflix my priority yeah. is you know um talking on the phone you know whatever mm -hmm. it is right so um you're just you having to switch that time and it actually it's actually when you start getting into that regimen that uh mm. that schedule with yeah. things like such as you know working out going mm -hmm. to the gym going to work and he, and then you can even change up and to, let's say let's go, wake up earlier and go to the gym and then your day feels longer yes you wake up earlier so true so true great great advice there. yeah i think the key thing i took there from what you said a lot of things was when you schedule things it jogged my memory i know they show like if you literally schedule things, you're much more likely to be more efficient with that time. Because you're right. It's not like you don't have time. Because when I was fat, I was thinking, ah, I don't have time to work out. And you know this. You said the same thing to yourself. And then magically, when you decided to not be fat, magically, you found the time. <laughs> magically. Yep. But it was always there. You're so right. So maybe instead of watching a video or doing this thing or that thing, you just schedule in the time. This is the time to prepare this video or maybe edit this video or work on the project or whatever. But yeah, if you schedule a time, you're much more likely to be efficient with that time. You're you're so true. You're so true. Or yes, if you're moving it, it may not work out. <laughs> right. And Kirk, let me say this this, yeah. uh, this thing about uh, just specifically about Kevin, right? Or just mm -hmm. like in this in general, yeah. Is that um, you know, when I when I said earlier about the uh, you know, to tomorrow's gonna come, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm gonna say is it's gonna sound messed up, but yeah. Kevin put himself in a in a predict uh, in a situation where now a lot of people know who he is. A mm -hmm. lot of people, you know, understand his legacy. He's mm -hmm. you know giving back to people. He's been able to help others, mm -hmm. and that's something that um, I want to do as well. Mm -hmm. Because even if I were to pass, mm -hmm. tomorrow's gonna come for other people. Like the world still goes around, and then. That's true. What you actually do while you're here on this earth, mm -hmm. hopefully it continues on after you're gone. So yes. even even though you know I did all this in you know while I was alive, you know mm -hmm. I took care of my body, I you know I uh, I took care of my family, mm -hmm. I gave back to my community, I I uplifted people, I inspired others, right? Um, I helped people get into jobs. I you know did all these things while mm -hmm. I was alive. I hope that that carries on. 
and uh, and helps and improve the world in some way because I know that the world is going to keep on spinning. So no, yes, that's very yeah. that's very very deep because at the end of the day we'll all be just a memory, but hopefully it's a good right. one. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah. At the end of the day, we'll all be just our members. Hopefully, it's a good one. But no, you dropped several words of wisdom, so I, I'm very impressed. I assume everybody else hearing what you're saying is impressed. So, this is the kind of stuff he does on his channel when he what he live streams or does videos. Very smart guy, like it's a very introspective, and yeah, this is why you should check out his channel. Well, thank <laughs> why, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should definitely. <laughs> look at it time. It's a, yeah, it's a great conversation, man. You you made me think. You said some new things and jogged my memory, like I said on the literally scheduling things because people tend tend to think to not schedule activities let's say oh at 2 p.m on saturday i will do this you more you don't usually think that way but it's incredibly effective if you do you know, incredibly yeah. effective if you do because you do have all saturday and all sunday and then suddenly damn where did the time go sat has Sat's gone <laughs> so true yeah you know what you can they schedule everything for work. You need to go ahead yeah. and schedule some stuff in your life. You, you sit up on that Zoom call all day. Yes. <laughs> You're like, hey, this, this Zoom call is like an hour. I got another one right after that. Yeah. <laughs> yep, but you can do that. But then you got to be able to do that with your uh, with your health as well. So yeah. I need to I need to wake up. I need to eat. Yeah. I need to go to my, you know, do my job, mm -hmm. go work out, whatever it is yeah. um, by good. a certain time. And I uh, need to do it consistently. So that way mm -hmm. I don't forget it. And if I do forget I feel bad because I missed out. Yes. And making yourself feel bad, like, oh, you know what? I missed the gym. I need yeah. to go ahead and you know, don't don't try and overdo it the next right. day. Just say, I'm gonna be consistent. I'm a you know, from here on out, I'm gonna mm -hmm. continue on doing it. So that way the next time it comes, yeah, you can just remember, like, okay, I need to make this a priority. Yes. Good point, good point, good point. Very good point, very good. One. So, man, thanks again for calling yeah. in. So thank you. Great conversation. Great conversation. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thank you. So that was before the billions, guys. Like I said, really good channel. Very good discussions that go on over there. I always find them pretty fascinating. Pretty fascinating. All right. So let's see. I missed a bunch of comments. I missed any super chats. Yep, I have. So the positive therapist says <laughs> medical mistrust in healthcare among Americans has dropped in recent decades and it's worse among blacks. To a 2020 poll, 7 of 10 black Americans say they are treated unfairly by the healthcare system, and 55% say they don't, they, they distrust it. Yeah, you know, when I was doing research, a great point. I remember seeing something when they were trying to figure out why black men don't go to the doctor. By the way, it stems from ancient things. Uh, well, ancient is in several decades ago. Uh, poor treatment, so they don't necessarily trust the medical system. Whether it was with the, you know, the military or the government rather just doing experiments on people back in the day. So, you know, legacy of racism, essentially. <clears throat> so you do have that as another big problem here where people just don't trust the medical system, which is one of the reasons they said that black men tend not to go to the doctors, ironically, which is obviously not, not good at the end of the day. Because I remember they said they're significantly more likely to trust black doctors because of these things because of these things. Very good point. So Tony says, in Jamaica, most people think if they look good, that means they're healthy and they're not seeing a doc doctor until they are obviously sick. Aha, so same problem exists. <laughs> Similar problem exists there. Hey, welcome, long story, short story. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Cool name, long story, short story. Well, actually, long story, short Jamaica. <clears throat> I take that back. <laughs> Very good. And let us see. Let me drop the link again if anybody else wants to call into the show. Let's see who else has joined. Hello, B. Pauly. Welcome to the show. Let's see who else do we have coming in here? Da, da, da. Yes. Hey, Uwizimana Angelique, welcome to the show as well. Thanks for calling in, or joining, I should say. But feel free to call in if you'd like. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Skincare Do's and Don't says, wow, that's not enough sleep to be so high function. Yeah, it's pretty incredible to be that sharp 
on three hours of sleep. That's one of the things that crossed my mind. Too. This shows how smart the guy was to be that high functioning. Yep, yeah, yeah, Super says, dude was pretty sharp to be so sleep deprived. Yeah, that's why it's, uh, yeah, you have to be incredibly smart to be that high functioning to get in intellectual debates with people and win like 99% of the time. That's pretty incredible. I agree. <clears throat> And as we've discussed, skincare dues and says it too. The body will eventually break down due to so much strain and stress. Yep. 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 This is unfortunately true. Unfortunately true. Um, ha, the realist she said, not big bones. <laughs> yeah. We debunked that myth the other day. Well, technically, yes, we as in a scientist came on the show and debunked that myth. Regarding the weight of the strength of the ankle bones, as I recall. There's no such thing. No such thing. Okay. The weightlifting geep says, nothing like a good nap on the couch. Yeah, naps are incredible. Even as short as 20 minutes. I mean, I remember when I used to the triathlons the first time I got into napping. And yeah, during lunchtime, I would just go to the car, turn it on, put up the shades to block the windshield, put on a night mask and... Take a 20, 30 minute nap and it felt incredible. I would have never guessed it, but I always trust the sands and those things. Just as little as 20 minutes, you will feel fantastic afterwards. You will feel great. The positive therapy says stress is detrimental to your health and mental health. Long term stress increases anxiety, depression, and sleep problems. Sadly, many people are stressed and don't realize it. Yeah. It's one of those things that's hard to detect. It. It's easy to get lost in it, so to speak. Easy, easy to do that. Easy to do that. This is so true. This is so true. Let's see. Yeah, this is a very good point. Skincare do's and don'ts says, unfortunately, we live in a society that glorifies team no sleep. People wear it as a badge of honor. This is so true. I fell into this trap for a while when I first came here where people would say, ah, I'm so stressed at work or stressed. I'm so busy and it was viewed as a yeah as, as as a good thing that is so true it was viewed as a good thing and i think it was my dad at that point that pointed it out to me he pointed it out to me that i was falling into that trap and it's so seductive so seductive it's very very easy for this to happen so seductive so seductive so, yep, I got it up in time. The lead attorney, the sponsor of today's shows. Of course, if somebody gives me more than $99, I will replace him. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right, see, what else do we got here? Da, da, da. The realist C says, I have a... Highly demanding job, I'm assuming, Shane, and I'm definitely guilty of sacrificing my health for my wealth on multiple levels. Yes, it's very seductive. That's why I try to use that word and intoxicating. It's really the study shows just very hard, you know, because you're smart, you work hard, you bust your ass, you, you're reaping the rewards now. So if you're reaping the rewards, you're going to want to do more. It's like when I was losing weight, I didn't want to slow down. I wanted to do more. Sure, it's the same with everybody. I'm sure when needs rides his bicycle, lose weight. He wants to ride it more, not less. It's human nature. If you're succeeding at something, you're going to want to put more effort in, right? Which is what makes us do well as a species and make people be successful. I'm sure when lead attorney passed his exams when he's in law school, it motivated him to study even harder, to do even better. <laughs> it didn't demotivate him, right? Uh, yeah, so that's the thing where we got to restrain ourselves, let's say, to some extent. <clears throat> Igwe's daughter says, yes, I'm a lead from the front type of gal, not too, not too effective and very stressful. Yes, we do have to learn to delegate. <laughs> we do, yeah, skincare dudes and those says, competent people are hard to find. You know, that is true, but I'll push back on that and say, you can train them, even if you can't find them, the people you do have, you can train them. Everybody can get better. Everybody can get better. And the realist, she said, true, everything can't be delegated. This is true. 
you, what I've learned is to keep the critical things to yourself and delegate everything else. You, you know, if say you do five things, or you say you do 10 things, they're not all that critical. You may think they're that critical, but they're really not. You can, you can delegate them. You can train people. And even if you do it better, they will get better over time, right? Um, you, can't, you can't grow a business without delegating. I know that. That's not possible. You don't want to be like somebody who owns a restaurant. And when you go on vacation, you shut down the restaurant because you don't trust anybody. You don't have anybody who can manage it. And how are you going to expand? How are you going to have a chain of them? You can't clone yourself. So it's, def it's definitely difficult. Don't get me wrong. I struggled with that problem before for years. But yeah, things that are not as critical as you think they are, those are the ones you got to delegate. Or even if they're important, if you're just not that good at it, like me and my editing, I, 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 or my thumbnails. My thumbnails recently got better because I don't try to do them. I was doing them. I had this little PowerPoint template that would shut the stock, find the picture, put it on the left, put this other stuff on the right, blah, blah, blah. They looked good. But they didn't look great. Now they look great. Why? Because I ain't doing them. <laughs> professional. A professional is doing them, right? And using Fiverr, it's affordable. It's not, it's affordable, right? It's definitely affordable. Definitely affordable. So that's something to think about. Something to think about. Positive therapy says, that's why it's important to spend time with the people who love you. Ask yourself when you're on your deathbed, what's important to you? The money you made or the time you spent with your children? Priorities. This is so true. You know, I remember years ago, this guy told me something, you know. Actually, I've read similar things. Later in life, nobody remembers the meetings they missed, the projects they never did, all these things. They more have the memories is what they remember, right? Vacations, fun times. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You don't want to have these regrets. When I read those autobiographies of very successful people, that was a common theme I felt. They were super, super successful. But they have these regrets, usually around time. They wish they had spent more time doing other things. Let's say. Yeah. This is a good point. Skincare do's and nonsense. He definitely has left a legacy. This being Kevin, from what I've watched thus far, he was very generous with sharing knowledge that is meaningful and lasts a lifetime. Yes. In watching all of these videos, I, I was not aware of how much of his personal time and especially knowing now how crazy busy he was that he would spend with people to give advice for free. I mean, you charge some people $3,000 an hour and other people give it to for free. So he was definitely giving, giving back for sure. Sharing the knowledge, skincare, do's and notes. Saturdays and Sundays seem to pass in the blink of an eye. So, so true. So, so sure. I think we can all do better, myself for sure, <laughs> scheduling things to do on the weekends. You schedule things for work, as before the billion said. Ah, yes, the Tuskegee experiment. It's things like this that uh, I remember reading about this when I was doing research for sure would make black people not trust the medical system in the US, you know? Tuskegee syphilis experiment, yes. Crazy things like that. Crazy things like that. Ah, positive therapy says, I've had many clients seek me out because they wanted to see a therapist who looked like them. And there are certain cultural benefits, obviously, if you see somebody from your own culture, right? There are certain little nuances that you will understand that's not in a book or something you learn in school. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Makes a lot of sense to me. So some history lessons being dropped by skincare do's and don'ts. James Marion Sims, known as the father of gynecology, used enslaved black women for his gynecological developments. I did not know this. James Marion Sims, wow, the father of gynecology. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. And I did not know this. <clears throat> On a lighter note, skincare do's and don'ts says, we're not big bone, we're just fat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, this, I remember this. This this commercial was uh, controversial. Bill Maher, the comedian, made fun of this. I re positive therapist said, I recall a Cadillac, Cadillac commercial that promoted Americans overworking themselves and running an empty. Yes, it praised that they only took two weeks vacation. What is that? They said they left with the moon buggy and the, the moon because they were going to go back and this and that and blah, 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 blah. And yeah, he made fun of it. What was his joke? Is he the psychologist or psychiatrist, I don't remember what, he said they traditionally take the summer off every summer, 
right? That just don't work. And he said, if the people whose job is to study crazy think it's crazy to not take time off, then it's crazy to not take time off. <laughs> I remember this is one of his like monologues at the end. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. The real SC says sometimes we have to outsource. Yes, this is very true. Wazy Man Angelic said, it's good to know that just because someone looks great, it does not necessarily reflect their internal health. Yes. So true. You know, if you think about it, it's like when you're trying to transform yourself, you have to track things, right? As if you can do it, you know, my fitness pal, the scale, taking photographs, what have you. But things on the inside, none of us are experts at that. This is where you got to see a doctor, get labs done, tests done. If you feel something off, it doesn't hurt. Most of us have insurance, so you have it for a reason. You're paying for it, you might as well use it. You know, if you feel, every doctor will tell you, if you feel some kind of way, go in. They never tell you, well, wait and see. They always say, well, I've been out. You go on in there, you go to that ER or whatever, they have to see you. Even people you don't, even if you don't have insurance, they have to see you. Better you go there and everything turns out to be fine that you don't go there and you pass away, right? Why risk it? If you feel funny, it could be much ado about nothing. They tell you, no, you're okay, and you go home. No fuss, no muss, but it's better to check. Ah, oh, yeah, Angelique has another good point here. Don't fake it until you make it if it's going to cost your life. Be honest and reflect and take a break. Yes, this is so true. So true. <laughs> Run me my PTO, please. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is so true. This is so true. Man. I agree with the real she. Lots of great points were made tonight. I agree 100% with that. I agree 100%. This is so true. This is so true. Lots of great points made, both philosophical, mental, and regarding our physical health. So, again, it's a very well-balanced discussion tonight. Thank you guys so much. It wasn't just on the technically health stuff as well. So, in summary, right, go see a doctor. Get checked up, get 79 hours sleep per night. If you cheat on sleep, if you're a man, her twin sister death will avenge her. If you're a woman, his twin brother will avenge him, right? And if you don't know what the hell you're doing, you're 30, 40, 50, whatever, don't just think magically you're going to know tomorrow what to do. Get yourself a professional. It is what it is. Don't, don't try and do stuff you know you can't do, right? It is what it is. You need to get set up something in tech, you'd go to before the billions. You needed a lawyer, you'd go to the lead attorney. You would not try to do these things yourself. Well, maybe you would, but it's either you'll fail or be incredibly inefficient. A big waste of your time. Huge waste of your time, actually. Forget big waste of time, huge waste of your time. Just hire a professional, man. You don't know what the hell you're doing, hire a professional. You can always check out my website and check that out. Right? The personal coaching, you can go to that website. Check me out. So again, I think fantastic discussion. Glad we did it. And again, paraphrasing, don't let a good crisis go to waste. In this case, a tragedy happened. And definitely rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. Hopefully he's in a better place. And let us just use this all as a wake-up call. You know, Get yourself checked out. That's the, that'd be the number one thing for sure. Don't guess and just assume that you're healthy. Just go to a doctor. Get your labs done, and there's no more guessing, no more guesswork. It's just numbers, right? The machine <laughs> the machine is just a machine. It doesn't care one way or the other. It's just going to spit out the numbers. It is what it is, as the saying goes. So, oh, thank you, Yaya Suber. Badass thumbnail, he says. Thank you. I did not do it. That's why it looks so good. Outsourced it to Fiverr. So gentleman I use that is, yes, he is, he is very badass. He does some incredible things. <laughs> he does some incredible things. So all my recently good new thumbnails, I have had nothing whatsoever to do with them. That's why they look good. <laughs> that is why they look good. That is why we look good. Hey, Uze Mana said, great. She said she took two weeks off work because God knows she needed it. That was very smart. That was very smart. Oh, and I did not know this. Most mental health professionals take two mental health days a month. I didn't know this. There you go. If the professional people who study crazy, <laughs> I'm just joking, you know, think it's necessary to take time off, then it's necessary to take time off. This is 
further evidence of this. Further evidence of this. So, all right. So, we need to get a good night's sleep. It's 9.30. So, later is my massive. May I go long now. For those who don't speak Jamaican Patwa, that is goodbye, my people. Good night. Peace. <laughs>